It is another edition of Fireside Dialogue where issues and the need to bridge the gap between youths and elderly for a more inclusive civil space. This dialogue became necessary due to the increasing gap between youths and the elderly, especially in the civil space. The conversation brought together elders of different age grades and Nigerian youths who expressed optimism, saying, Fireside chats such as this is an eye opener towards closing the gap. less communication between the older generation and the younger ones and some of us who are old are failing to mentor the younger ones if you exclude the political class you will find and the yahoo yahoo young people you will find that 80 percent of the younger people and 80 percent of the older people need to collaborate and work together more in the sense that the frustrations the younger people have, we the older persons did not have it. We had things on a platter of food. But we had scholarship to go to school. We got a job, government got us a job before we finished. And the younger generation don't have all those opportunities. And that's why some of them go into all sorts of criminality because their chances are being reduced every day. The political caste is making life very difficult for Nigerians, borrowing, squandering money, doing all sorts of things. So my take is that parents should spend time mentoring their children, and children should make an effort to listen to the stories of their parents how they survived the hard times. Hard times have always been there, you know, so it's a question of more communication between the elderly and the young, and that's why this forum is very, very appropriate, where the elderly people and the young people can talk together and encourage one another. So we cannot say the learning curve is up to down, down to up. Let's just leave it as the middle. Since in equilibrium, we both learn from each other. Nobody's an island. So whatever the elderly people have to teach us, we are ready to listen. Whatever the youth have to teach elderly people, they should be ready to listen also. So if we look at the civic space now, most of the, most of the people in the civic space are elderly people. But what we need now is not, we, don't, we no longer need elderly people, we need youth. We need young people who have vibrant ideas to come out and speak for us. If you take the recent protests now, the only reason why we were heard was because of, it was the youth. It was the adults that went out, they will never be heard. But because they know that the youth have the energy to vandalize properties, the youth have the energy to change policies, they give the youth a listening ear. So I think that we need more youths. We need, uh, we need the youths to come out and to be more involved in the civic space. And this is a very good program to do that. Director Global Rights Abiyo Dumbayu, in her welcome remark, urged the participants to be open-minded and express their opinion as such will go a long way in addressing the gap between the youths and elderly in the civil space. She also said, global rights will continue to provide avenues to close the gap. People are starting to see the perspectives of the different generations. But, uh, and I think that it's even more important to think about how to ensure greater access for public life for the elderly because they have a lot of wisdom to pass on. I think that we've also been able to see that young people have been very sacrificial and very patient in spite of the environment that they continue to stick with this country. And the bigger question is how can we all now work together to make our country better, to make our communities better, to make our homes better? 
So one of the things that my organization can do is what we're doing right now, creating the spaces where we can have conversations about this. One of the things that we'll also continue to do is hold governments accountable for ensuring that the civic space is open to both the young and the old. Now for the elderly, one of the problems we have currently is they can't engage in public life. They can't engage in public life because there is no public transportation policy that um, prioritizes sitting for them or transportation for them. Then you go to a banking hall, just as you've heard, and then the elderly have to stand in the same queue with the young. You think about how do you make society safe enough for elderly people to even come out from their houses? Life expectancy is very low in Nigeria. And one of the reasons is Nigeria is not elderly friendly. For the coordinator of Fireside, this edition is geared towards harmonizing the perspective of younger and older generation. When we talk about inclusion of young people and elderly people, it's not just about you know politics or go, taking into the polls. It's about ensuring that Nigeria maintains its democracy and ensuring an inclusive society. One of the bedrock of an inclusive society is one that harmonizes the voices of everybody, especially those of invisible groups. So when we have intergenerational conversations like this, where we bring young people and older people into one room to sort of unite their perspectives, bridge gaps, and you know, sort of bridge the divide, it's one step closer towards um, ensuring a more protected civic space. And like I said, a true, a true reflection of democracy is a civic space that's inclusive and represents the um, voices and perspectives of even those who are traditionally excluded and marginalized. So that's really the idea. We see how the young people can learn from the older people and older people can learn from the younger people and how the, you know, the strength of the younger people and the wisdom of the older people can be um, united really in ensuring that democracy is fostered and civic space remains inclusive and protected. The theme for this fireside dialogue is bridging the tie gap, uniting youth and elderly voice towards a more inclusive civil space.